Are you ready? Yes. Hello. Um, I am uh, happy to be here and happy to be joined by this lovely young woman, Anna Miller, who is going to interview me. She's got some questions that she wanted to ask. So, Anna, go ahead and ask whatever you want. Okay. How long have you been in real estate? How long have I been in real estate? Well, I have been officially in real estate for seven years. Uh, five of the last I have owned and been the broker of this great company, which is now called Cell State Realty Solutions. Cool. All right. Why did you become a real estate agent? Why did I become a real estate agent? Well, I was looking to own my own business, set my own hours, and be successful without having to punch a clock or work on somebody else's program. What did you do before that? Before that, I spent about the last almost 20 years flying jet aircraft, about uh, 10 years of which with United Airlines and 10 years as a pilot in the Marine Corps. Fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what do you like most about what you do? What do I like most? Well, I like putting deals together. And I like the interaction with the people. And sometimes it's very tense and sometimes it's very easy. And I like to take a difficult situation and put it, all the pieces together in such a way where it works for everybody. Uh, what do you not like about what you do? What do I not like? Well, one of the things I really don't like to do is when we have uh, or have grown the operation so big and we get to a point where maybe our business drops off like it has with some of our bank homes and we have to uh, downsize the operation. Sometimes we have to cut people out, cut people's hours or cut people's pay or lay people off. And I don't like doing that. That's not a fun part of the job to sit down with somebody and say, hey, we've got to, you know, go over your compensation or even worse, say, hey, we don't have a position anymore. That I really don't like to do that. It's a difficult decision, and um, but sometimes I just have to do it because it's the right thing to do. Okay. What are some of the things you do on a daily basis? On a daily basis, well, I interact with all the employees here, and I provide leadership and guidance for them, and I interact with agents. I train them. I coach them. I help them with their transactions. I do a lot of things with the bank listings, like I figure out how much they're worth so we know how to price them so we can sell them, and I just help be around if people need things. Are you successful at what you do? Yes, I would say yes. Last year, we sold the value of all the houses that we sold, that we put them all together was $200 million last year. And what that translated to was about $6 million of commission income to our agents here. So I would say that is pretty successful. Yep. What separates a good real estate agent from a bad real estate agent? A good real estate agent knows how to communicate with their client. They know how to keep their client uh, educated, and they know how to take control of the situation and make it easy for their client, who's either having to sell a house or trying to buy a house. It can be very stressful. Uh, they say the most difficult things you'll ever do in your life, uh, there's five of them. One is get married. One is get divorced. One is death in the family. And... Uh, another is buying or selling a house. They're, they're one of the most stressful times in a person's life. It's, a home is the most expensive thing any one average person will ever own, more than a car or anything like that. So it's very, it can be very stressful. Good agents make it easy for their clients to go through that process, feel comfortable about it, and a bad agent just doesn't do that. What were the things again? Well, let's see. Um, getting 
getting married is one of the five most stressful things. Okay. Okay. Getting divorced is one of the five most stressful things. Death in the family. Okay. Um, buying or selling a house. Mm-hmm. And the other one is... I forgot. Okay. We'll have to look that one up. So, for now, it's the four stressful things. So, it's the, the four stressful things. There is, there is, but I think it was number five. I think there was having something more stressful. What was that? Having a kid. Having a kid. I don't know if having a kid is, is stressful. Um, I don't know. What do you think about that? Do I look stressed? I've got a couple. Oh, wait. Okay. Okay. Why do you live in a rental house? Oh, good question. So I'm a real estate agent, but I don't even live in a house I own. I live in a rental house. Well, there's a good reason for that. Uh, If I was buying a house right now that was like $80,000, $100,000, I would probably do that. But... The range of houses that I'm looking to live in and the type of neighborhood and the size of the house with all the amenities, that type of house, there are a bunch of them for sale. As a matter of fact, the type of house I want to live in, if no more of those came on the market and just the current ones we have sold, it would take four years for them all to be purchased because there's not a lot of people to buy these houses. So what that means is that the prices of these are going to fall. So... I can buy a house now and pay a whole bunch of money, or I can be very patient, wait a year maybe, and wait for the values of those houses to drop, then go buy one when it's a good deal. So it's more than just wanting to be in the house I want to live in. I want to be. I want to get a good deal on it. So that's the reason I haven't bought a house. Kind of like with the Wii or PS3 when it comes out, it's really expensive. You wait a year and it's like. Not as expensive. Sure, and the trade-off is, well, you, you know, you don't get to play it for a year. So if it's $259 when it comes out, but a year later it's only going to be 199 is it worth the 50 bucks to wait? Maybe not. You get enjoyment out of it. Of course not. But if a house today is a million dollars, but next year it's going to be 700000 that's $300,000. That'll buy a lot of Wii's. I can have Wii's in every room. PS3s. PS3s in every room. So I would wait the year for the house to value to fall, which is what I think is going to happen with the high-end homes. Okay. Why are you wearing blue? Why am I wearing blue? Well, I've been told I look lovely in blue and uh, that, that light colors wash out my face. And so I try to wear bright colors because um, people have said that, that I should do that. You should wear hot pink. I do. I have a hot pink. It's more of a hot salmon. No, no, no. Hot pink. Hot pink. Then I'll have to get a hot pink shirt. Yeah. I have to make sure it doesn't wash out, you know, my skin and everything. Yeah. Since I'm a man. I'm pale. Awesome. What's your favorite song? My favorite song. Well, I don't know that I have a favorite song, but I have a favorite type of song. My favorite types of song are um, songs from Broadway musicals like Oklahoma, West Side Story, The Music Man. Sound of Music, South Pacific, all those fun musicals. I like those songs. What's your favorite quote? My favorite mm-hmm. quote. Well, there was this naval officer. He was the, considered the father of the U.S. Navy who lived back during the Revolutionary War times. And his name was John Paul Jones. And he, he was attributed to a lot of famous quotes, but there's one that's that's... He who will not risk cannot win. And the reason it's my favorite quote is because what it says is if you really want to be successful and do it, you have to take some chances. So one of the exciting things that I get to do in business is we get to take chances. We get to go in a direction and see where that's going to lead us and see if that's going to be profitable and fun. So that's my favorite quote because... I like taking risks because I like the reward at the end of the day. Okay. Are there any more questions? What's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? It's the eagle because it soars and it's a proud bird and it looks very calm and very confident. And I feel like I am very calm and very confident. So I like the eagle. What's the difference between a normal eagle and a bald eagle? Uh, I guess the bald eagle... It has the white hair and it looks like it's bald. I don't know. 
It's got white hair, it isn't bald. So there you go. 